capacity stretched as critical COVID patients expected to increase. Government initiates phase four of PICK to reduce workplace clusters. Hello and good evening. Thank you for joining me. You're watching News at 10 with me, Shuhaida Arifin. The number of categories 4 and 5 COVID-19 patients shows an increasing trend since April based on the data from the Crisis Preparedness and Response Center, CPRC. According to Health Minister Dato Suri Dr. Adham Babu in the weekly COVID-19 Immunization Task Force, CITF media briefing, 6,751 cases were recorded in April, which increased to 30,287 in May. This month, 22,000. 857 categories 4 and 5 cases were recorded, bringing the total to 59,895 as of yesterday. Datuk Sri Adham explained that the increase in cases for both of these categories were expected to continue rising this month, simultaneously impacting bed usage rates in intensive care units ICU. Jumlah katil keseluruhan di ICU adalah uh, sebanyak 1,767 dan bilangan pesakit yang berada di ICU termasuk uh, hospital angkatan tentera ialah seramai 1,000, uh, 1,161 untuk kes-kes uh, COVID-19 probable atau suspected dan daripada uh, Kedudukan sakit di ICU tersebut uh, nak seperti saya maklum tadi ventilator yang telah digunakan pada sakit tersebut ialah sebanyak uh, pada hari ini uh, 452 kes yang menggunakan uh, bantuan pernafasan. Jadi uh, ini ialah uh, katil-katil ICU yang digunakan dan kedudukan katil ICU yang telah digunakan. Setakat ini penggunaan ialah sebanyak 97%. He added that the average number of cases requiring ventilator support also increased by 4.1%, equivalent to 454 cases from those treated in ICUs as of 12th June. Meanwhile, 1,413 categories 4 in 5 COVID-19 patients had since April up to yesterday. The fourth phase of the National COVID-19 Immunization Program, PICK, involving critical economic sectors has been activated to control the number of workplace clusters. The program's coordinating minister, Karu Jamaluddin, said the fourth phase of the pandemic control phase would begin at industrial areas that were allowed to operate during the movement control order period, which has been extended to 28th June. Citing yesterday's daily COVID-19 data in which 11 out of 15 new clusters recorded were workplace outbreaks, Khairi said it was important for the fourth phase to kick off as soon as possible to stop the transmission of infection among workers. He said the International Trade and Industry Ministry would coordinate the Industry Vaccination Centre PPV for the vaccination process for the manufacturing sector. Selepas itu kita akan uh, buka PPB industri di sektor-sektor lain termasuklah sektor uh, pembinaan, sektor peladangan uh, dan seterusnya sektor uh, peruncitan dan juga sektor hospitality. Dan perkara ini akan kita uh, gerakkan secara berperingkat untuk memastikan bahawa sektor-sektor yang beroperasi sewaktu PKP dapat diberi perlindungan uh, melalui vaksinasi kita. Speaking at a weekly COVID-19 immunization task force CITF media conference, Kairi said a total of 30,000 vaccination doses were provided to the industry this month, including Sarawak. 
Meanwhile, Kerry said journalists covering the upcoming Tokyo Olympic have received their vaccine injections starting today. He said the 38 individuals involved in the media coverage of the Games were scheduled to be given the first dose of the vaccine at the Malaysia International Trade and Exhibition Center in Kuala Lumpur. Kerry said for those who have received the first dose of the AstraZeneca vaccine, the COVID-19 Immunization Task Force, CITF, would arrange their appointments for the second dose before leaving for Tokyo. The Tokyo Olympic Games will be held from this 23rd July to 8th August. According to Kairi, 700 vaccination appointments had been given to media practitioners across the country for the first dose of the vaccine and more would follow this week. ITF juga perlu mengimbangi keperluan vaksinasi rakan-rakan media kita dengan keperluan fasa 2 iaitu uh, golongan warga emas, golongan orang kur, uh, kurang upaya dan golongan uh, komorbid. Last Wednesday, 98 media practitioners started receiving the first dose of the vaccine at Dewan Saroja Putrajaya followed by 123 others in Perak two days later. Person with Disabilities OKU can now sign up through OKU Central to have their vaccination expedited. Its President Senator Datuk Ras Adibarazi said OKU Central, in a joint initiative with the Science, Technology and Innovation Ministry, also introduced a drive through vaccination program to make it easier for the OKU and to hasten the vaccination process for the disabled community. Yang senangnya adalah mereka tidak perlu nak keluar bertukar, terutamanya yang sukar uh, dengan pergerakan. Uh, uh, namun begitu, kita juga ambil maklum bahawa ada juga sahabat-sahabat yang autisma yang um, mungkin memerlukan sokongan yang lebih. Jadi Alhamdulillah kami dengan... Um, Expanded to other places if it well received by the disabled community. The drive through vaccination center will be opened on Monday to Friday from 9 a.m. until 5 p.m. Malaysia recorded a further drop in the number of the new COVID-19 cases in the past 24 hours with 4,949 reported today compared to 5,304 yesterday. According to a statement by Health Director General Tan Sri Dr. Nor Hisham Abdullah, six of the amount reported today were import cases and the remaining were all local transmissions. Selangor remains the state with the most new cases with 1,523 cases reported today followed by Sarawak with 744 cases and Kuala Lumpur 503 cases. Meanwhile, 6,588 patients recovered and were discharged, bringing the cumulative number of recoveries to 586,864, equivalent to an 88.59% recovery rate. 71,625 cases are currently active and monitored in the country, with 921 of them in intensive care units and 459 of them requiring respirators. The Health Ministry also reported 60 new COVID-19 related fatalities and the death toll in the country is now stand at 3,968. The letter of approval for the Movement Control Order MCO 3.0 beginning 1st June will be valid throughout the extension period of the MCO 3.0 from Tuesday 15th June to Monday 28th June. Police will continue accepting the letter at roadblocks set up at crucial checkpoints. Sampai ujung bulan. Jadi surat yang dikeluarkan oleh semua kementerian dia, dia ada dia punya QR code. Jadi pihak polis dia boleh uh, cek QR code tu dan uh, tengok sama ada uh, syarikat tu betul disahkan uh, tulen lah. Uh, itu uh, surat yang anggota polis di Sekatan Jalan Raya akan cek. He, however, added that stern action will be taken against those who produce fake letters of approval. Next, Sarawak leaders plead for strong and stable government needed in COVID-19 fight. Stay with us.
yang di-Pertuan Agong Al-Sultan Abdullah Riayatuddin Al-Mustafa Billah Shah agreed to grant an audience to the leaders of Gabungan Parti Sarawak GPS component parties virtually. GPS Chairman Datuk Patinggia Abang Johari Tun Openg, who is also Sarawak Chief Minister, in a statement said three crucial factors were presented to combat COVID-19 in the country. This includes acceleration and completion of the vaccination program in Sarawak by August in order to achieve herd immunity. In addition, the statement also emphasised on the need for a presence of a strong and stable government to ensure COVID-19 economic recovery programmes and implementations are well grounded as well as the implementation of a post-COVID-19 economic exit plan. Also present at the virtual session were Parti Rakyat Sarawak PRS President Tan Sri James Jemut Masing, Sarawak United People's Party SUPP President Datuk Sri Dr Sim Kui Hia and Progressive Democratic Party President Datuk Sri Tiong King Singh. The three factors tabled by the GPS chairman was agreed on by all three presidents of PRS, SUPP and PDP. PAS agreed with AMNO's suggestion not to pressure the Perikatan Nasional PN government to hold the 15th general election, GE15, anytime soon as the country should be focusing on fighting the COVID-19 pandemic, which has been deemed a grave emergency. Its Secretary General, Datuk Sri Takiuddin Hassan, said the suggestion was appropriate and timely as the focus of attention of the state and federal governments should be on the efforts to fight the deadly coronavirus, which is still still spreading in Malaysia and around the world. In a statement today, Datuk Suri Takiyudin said political parties should also focus on efforts to help the people affected by the pandemic, not only in the aspect of health but also the economy. He said all political parties as well as non-governmental organisations should also give their cooperation to the government in handling and solving issues related to COVID-19, including issues that could raise tension and bring about a negative impact as well as a waste of time, energy and money. He added that PAS is confident that the government will continue taking proactive measures after taking into consideration the opinions and suggestions from all quarters for the benefit of all Malaysians. The Regent of Pahang Tengku Hassan Al Ibrahim Alam Shah Al Sultan Abdullah has instructed for the Chini Forest Reserve in Pekan to be expanded. This is to help safeguard the flora and fauna found near Tasik Chini and the surrounding areas. Comptroller of the Royal Household for the Sultan of Pahang, Dato Ahmad Khirizal Abdul Rahman, in a statement said, Tengku Hassanal ordered the existing permanent reserve forest measuring 4,600 hectares to be widened to around 6,000 or 7,000 hectares. The order was made after the region conducted a surprise visit to Tasik Chini yesterday. Tengku Hassan Al had also studied the report presented by Menteri Besar Datuk Seri Wan Rosdi Wan Ismail on the mining activities at the lake. Datuk Ahmad Khiriza said the region suggested all mining activities at Tasik Chini be seized and the former mining sites be rehabilitated by planting suitable forest trees. Applications for the intake of Sijil Pelajar Malaysia SPM graduates into higher public education institutions will be reopened starting tomorrow to 21st June. According to the Ministry of Higher Education, KPT, the decision was made to give another chances to those who have missed the previous window. KPT said the reopening involved reapplication into certification programs, foundation, diploma, and bachelor's degree courses. Applications can be made via the official UPU portal at the website displayed on the screen. Previously, the applications for admission into higher public education institutes were opened in January and concluded three months later. Johor police have successfully crippled the biggest cigarette smuggling syndicate in the east coast of the state with the arrests of three men posing as tour boat operators at the Andalmer Singh Jetty area last Friday. Johor Police Chief Datu Ayub Khan Maidin Piche said the suspect aged between 27 and 51 were believed to have been operating in the area since last year's MCO. 
According to Dato Ayub Khan, police also seized 930 cartons of cigarettes of various brands worth 7.6 million ringgit. They also confiscated a boat, two lorries and a radar equipment with a total worth of 9.3 million ringgit. Satu kapal besar yang berada di perayaan antara bangsa dan sebut ni akan pergi untuk membuat pindahan, pemindahan dan terus buat masuk ringan. Bot ni kalau tuan-tuan tengok, bot tu bot persiaran, bot pelancongan yang telah pun diubah suai. Bot ni sebelum COVID ni digunakan untuk membuat pelancong untuk aktiviti diving. So diubah suai, konfirman-konfirman dalam tu pun diubah suai untuk uh, menyuduk uh, kontraband je lah. Pokok ni tuan-tuan, bot ni daripada, ini daripada Vietnam ni, yang sebelah ni, produk sebelah ni Vietnam. Dia akan bawa, dia akan, sorry, ni Vietnam punya ni. Dia akan bawa, dia akan pergi ke Batam dan ambil dia offer protect. Daripada Batam dan dia akan naik balik. Speaking to the media at the Region 2 Marine Police Tactical Base in Mersing, Dato Ayub Khan said the suspects are being remanded until Wednesday, adding that the case is investigated under the Section 135, Subsection 1, Subsection D of the Custom Act 1967. The Kuala Lumpur High Court rejected the appeal by former Prime Minister Datuk Seri Najib Tun Raza to temporarily suspend an order by the Inland Revenue Board LHDN for him to pay a sum of 1.69 billion ringgit. The court order remains which requires Datuk Seri Najib to pay taxes and late payment penalties in the period of 2011 to 2017. Judge Dato Ahmad Bache in his decision also imposed a 15,000 ringgit in legal costs to the defendant. In June 2019, the government by LHDN filed claims towards Dato Sri Najib amounting to 1.69 billion ringgit, including an interest rate of 5% a year starting from the judgment date, including costs and other reliefs. In the claim statement, Datuk Sri Najib was alleged to have failed to pay his income tax for the years 2011 until 2017 in a time span of 30 days affixed after the assessment notice was issued. In a related development, Datuk Sri Najib also filed an appeal against the decision of the High Court previously at the Court of Appeal. His appeal is scheduled for hearing on 16 June. Harimau Malaya head coach Tan Cheng Ho put a Malaysian win over Thailand early Wednesday morning as a priority over the clean record he has in three encounters against the War Elephants. Cheng Ho said the last group G match of the second round of the 2022 World Cup 2023 Asian Cup qualifiers was crucial to the national team's pride in the qualifying campaign after losing to United Arab Emirates UAE and Vietnam earlier. Uh, we know that uh, uh, even though uh, last two matches, Thailand also drew with uh, Indonesia and uh, uh, lost to UAE. But as uh, we analyze their game overall, they, they have a good team. They have a good uh, uh, set of players among them. So we have to aware and we have to be uh, this time. Uh, we have to go all out and to get our um, positive result against them. As Harimau Malaya coach, Cheng Ho has yet to lose to Thailand since taking over the task of leading the national squad in December 2017 with a record of one win and two draws. However, according to the record of the last 10 meetings since December 2010, Malaysia only managed to win two with four losses and four draws. Thailand and Malaysia now face a do-or-die battle to grab third place in Group G to secure a slot in the third round of the 2023 Asian Cup qualifiers after both teams shared nine points in third and fourth place on goal difference. After seven matches, Vietnam lead Group G with 17 points, followed by UAE with 15 points, Thailand third, Malaysia fourth, and Indonesia in the bottom with one point. All right, so that concludes today's news at 10. Headlining today's bulletin, ICU capacity stretch as critical COVID patients expected to increase. Join us again at 12.30 tomorrow afternoon. I'm Shuhaida Arifin. Stay tuned to Saluran Berita RTM and have a good night.